your shot protect and your card. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's, it's good afternoon. I was about to say good morning. It's good afternoon. We'll get started in just a minute. Uh, we'll uh, get this, this session going. Um, we, will, uh, we are recording, and this will be posted uh, through the Career Center, so folks can come back to it if you miss something or uh, if you're not able to attend. It looks like we've got pretty good attendance, but I know it's a uh, a busy part in the semester. There are really very few not busy parts in the semester, of course. Uh, but uh, for those of you, particularly who are first years, you realize that, you know, all right, first semester was bad, but I wasn't also looking for a summer job then. So uh, second semester can get can get a, a little rough as well, we know, but that's, that's the nature of law school. Um, okay, so why don't we, get started. Uh, I'll start first. We've got uh, a team of experts on this call today, and I will uh, uh, go around the room a little bit with introductions, um, just so uh, everybody knows who all the different uh, players are who have a role in uh, facilitating and making sure that you have uh, a, an understanding of uh, these different programs. Um, there are some still some people come in, so I'll give it uh, coming in. So I'll give it one more minute. All right, all right. So let's go. Uh, so hi everybody again. Uh, welcome. Uh, I'm Ray Brescia. I uh, teach uh, a, a number of classes here. I've had a bunch of you for a number of those classes as well, uh, and also uh, run some of the programs that we'll talk about today. Um, we've also got Professor Mann, who is uh, going to run the summer in practice, is running the summer in practice program. We'll tell you all about that in a little bit. We've got Jaya Connors, who runs the school's field placement program, Professor Jaya Connors. Uh, we've got uh, Dean Fitzsimmons in the registrar's office. We've got Joanne Casey in career planning. And I thought we were going to have Susie Nohai as well, who's in the clinic. Um, I don't see her. Maybe she's on a different screen. But um, she wasn't she... able to make it today, Professor Brescia. She's okay. coming to send her condolences. Okay, thanks, Professor Connors. Um, so uh, she's she's uh, uh, integral in a, in a couple of these programs as well. So uh, as I said, you've got a whole team of experts here to help you understand some of the opportunities uh, available to you at Albany Law School. Uh, they they're very exciting. Uh, lots of really, I think, unique opportunities that you have as a student at Albany Law School, and so we're going to make. Sure sure, uh, do our best to make sure you understand what those uh, programs are. Um, so primarily, you know, given the time of year, uh, the, the one of the most important programs we're going to talk about today is the summer in practice program. Okay. Uh, but, but I want to start with just a sort of getting our terms down. Uh, so that folks understand uh, what the different programs are, the basic contours of them, uh, because they, they, they are a little bit different. And, uh, you know, we want to make sure that when, when you are thinking about uh, what opportunities you want to take advantage of, you understand what they are and you understand when you want to start thinking about trying to get into these programs. And, the, and, and given the, the sort of point in time in the academic calendar, the, the thing that's coming up first is really the summer and practice program that you should be thinking about. Uh, but what we'll, 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 I want to run through the terminology and, and actually start with 
two programs that we're not going to talk about uh, today for the most part, uh, but just want to put those out there so you know what they are. Uh, and so you're, you're familiar with those terms and you can start thinking about when you would think about trying to get into such programs, okay? Uh, we're gonna spend the bulk of this session on summer in practice, semester in practice, and city semester, right? So put those aside for a second. What I wanna talk about first uh, are the field placement programs and uh, or the field placement program and the clinics. Okay, just very briefly um, what those are so that you understand the differences between these different programs. And I invite Professor Connors, who runs the field placement program, to step in and correct me at any point, but I want to just sort of uh, I, I tell you what those what those are. So the field placement program is a, a program through which students during the fall and or spring semesters work as interns in law placements, mostly in the capital region or adjacent. Uh, and you do it for credit and you participate in a classroom component to that, uh, to that, uh, that complements your internship. Those internships can be in government, in the legislature, uh, in state agencies, in nonprofits, in limited situations, they can be in private practice. We'll talk about some of that. But that's a part-time position during the fall or spring semester. You're getting academic credit and you participate in a, a weekly classroom component, okay? There's an application process for that. In the, for the fall, that happens in late spring. For the spring, that happens in late fall. Um, so just so you understand, so that's you know, field placement, fall and spring, internship for credit, okay? Second, the clinics, where those field placements are done outside the building, the in-house clinics are done through the law school under the supervision of Justice Center faculty, um, immigration clinic, uh, uh, family violence litigation clinic, the um, uh, domestic violence prosecution, uh, prosecution hybrid clinic, so you, you, the community economic, economic development clinic, the health clinic. We have in-house clinics where you provide real services to real clients under the auspices of the Justice Center, under the supervision of law school faculty. So whereas field placement is outside in a, uh, a law office, clinics are done out of the justice center. Um, so those are generally done during the school year as well, like field placements. Um, Professor Connors, I invite you to, to add anything to, to polish off the rough, rough edges uh, and uh, anything to describe about the field placements or clinics that I might have gotten wrong or you think that students uh, might uh, want to know? Uh, no, you, you've got everything right, Professor Brescia. I would just add, add that field placement is also with the courts. So we have a lot of students who are placed in different courts, both federal and state courts, DA's offices, public defenders, and as Professor Brescia said, with government offices and you know, as a student, you can really create your own learning goals for each of these placements when you work with the supervisors. So it allows you a lot of flexibility. You can also find a placement that works for you and come to us and ask whether or not that can be included. So it allows for a lot of flexibility. It allows you, sorry, I've been talking a lot this week. It allows you to have a lot of, um, uh, you know, control over the kind of work that you think you might like to do. Uh, and, and that really is, you know, the bottom line for all of this is, you know, yes, there are some specific clinics and yes, there are placements that we've, that we've had students uh, go to before. Uh, we're not forcing you to do any of them. You have control over, you know, where you want to go. Uh, we have enough placements that you can find, usually find something that's in your wheelhouse, something you want to do, something you want to try. Um, you know, we, we have over 150 placements and Professor Connors, correct me if that number is bigger. I think it is maybe a little bigger, um, but 
we also will work with you to find a placement that works great for you, right? We, we will work with you and jo jo Joanne Casey is on as well. We often partner with the Career Center if there's uh, an area of law, uh, a region where we wanna develop contacts where you wanna work, we will work with you to, to, to find a, a great placement for you. Now, let's, let's shift a little bit from the field placement and the clinics to these other programs, okay? Uh, and they are a little different, the summer in practice, the semester in practice, and city semester. Uh, I'm going to focus on the first two. Uh, summer in practice and semester in practice are different from field placements and clinics in the sense that you are working full time, for the most part, at a, uh, a law office placement. Summer practice occurs in the summer during the seven weeks of the, uh, the, the, the academic summer. Uh, semester in practice takes place during the school year. Uh, fall or spring semesters, students work full time. We consider full time 33 hours a week. You got 12 credits for that work. Uh, there's a classroom component that you join weekly but you get essentially a full semester's worth of academic credit for working as a volunteer at a law office where uh, with, with summer in practice and semester in practice, unlike field placement and clinics, you can work anywhere in the world. And we've had students work in Tunisia. We have a student this semester working in Scotland. Uh, Washington, Nashville, LA, San Francisco, anywhere in the world, you can work full time and get a full semester's worth of academic credit during the fall semester, during the spring semester, and you can do the same for the summer. So the, it's a little different in, in another uh, in crucial way is whereas with field placement and clinics, while we have a, a wide array of both with the summer in practice and semester in practice, it's almost limitless of where you can work. It's just a question of finding a great placement for you. Uh, for government and uh, uh, nonprofits, as long as there's a lawyer who can supervise you and you're doing legal work, we will generally approve those placements. With private placements, we like to see that the type of work or where you want to work uh, is critical for your development, uh, for your career plans, uh, and it's difficult for you to work in a government or private setting, excuse me, nonprofit setting, doing that kind of work. So we've approved placements in private placements where people wanted to uh, work on, for example, um, patent work, okay? Uh, there are some placements where you can do intellectual property work that are nonprofit. We have a great program, the Innovation in Intensive, which is with the SUNY Research Foundation, where you work in the SUNY Systems Technology Transfer Program. But that's, and that's, you do a lot of IP there, but there are very few government and nonprofit placements to do IP. So if you want to do IP work, we will generally approve a private placement that does that kind of work. But so the difference with semester in practice and summer in practice, it, 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 a big difference between field placement and uh, the clinics is A, they are full time. B, there's not a, a, an approved list and you sort of apply through uh, a common portal. Usually we work with the student to find a place that meets their career goals. This, this, this semester, we've got a number of students in semester in practice who really wanted to work in the Boston region. Uh, Professor uh, Joanne Casey and I, mostly Joanne, worked really hard to find great placements for students in the Boston area where we don't have a lot of, uh, um, you know, pre-approved placements. So we had to hustle a little bit and we do. That's what we do at Albany Law School. We had a student a couple of years ago who had done 
a lot of, he had done a number of internships on the prosecution side and said, you know, I want to do defense work. Um, I said, great, well, we've got a lot of contacts where we can find, you know, public defender of Albany County. He's like, yeah, I want to work in Tennessee. It's like, oh, okay, well, let's think about, you know, the public defender in Tennessee, you know, Nashville. And I say, I want to work in the federal defender service. Okay, federal defenders. I want to work in the federal defender service of the Eastern District of Tennessee. Like, well, that's very specific. Uh, but you know what? Went online, found some contacts, made a phone call. And in about five minutes, we had connected this student to uh, one of the uh, federal defender supervisors in the Eastern District of Tennessee. And about 20 minutes later, he had his internship. And, and here's, the, here's the semester in practice and Albany law advantage because we have the semester in practice. I could call that federal defender in the Eastern District of Tennessee, who, you know, it was late summer, uh, and, you know, they had just finished their crop of students for the summer. They were looking out over the, the, the horizon. They had no student interns for that upcoming semester. And I, I was on the phone saying, hey, I can send you this great Albany Law student who wants to work for you full time for 14 weeks when you normally won't have any other students. And he was like, that's amazing. That's great. We'd love to take that student on. So with, with semester in practice, you are not, because you're doing in the fall or the spring, you're not competing with 10,000 other law students looking for summer jobs, right? So it's a real opportunity that you have to get in somewhere where, you, where the competition is going to be must, much less dramatic for the fall and the spring, okay? Now with summer in practice, you absolutely you are competing with other students from other law schools for the summer program. Um, but still, you know, there are more opportunities as well for the summer because many uh, law, law offices have a summer program. Right. And we have excellent relationships with so many organizations for summer internships. Uh, and, and we can work with you, uh, the career center, your career planner uh, your, uh, can work with you to figure some of that out. I want to sort of pass the baton a little bit to Professor Mann at this point um, to if you want to add anything about summer in practice and maybe talk to students about how they could start thinking about, you know, getting enrolled and, and whether they want to enroll in summer in practice. And you're on mute. Okay. So the wonderful thing about summer in practice is it's a blending. So it's the best of all the worlds you're hearing Professor Breja describe. So for the summer, you have a combination of field placement and Susie Nohai and I do work very closely. So um, there is a list of placements. It's a growing list. It's, it's a live list. It's been around for very, very long. So you can work with um, Susie in the clinic with regard to accessing the list and talking about the field placements that are, uh, that are available for summer in practice. Summer in practice includes field placement as well as what Ray was describing. It is the summer continuation of semester in practice or city in practice, um, or as Ray has also spoken about some of his innovation programs. I have also worked with his patent students who had summer patent opportunities to continue in an innovation program uh, at SUNY, working with SUNY people. And um, so we are very flexible. So just as Ray said, it's the same flexibility all around here whether it's um, Ray, myself, or Jaya, um, Joanne, uh, we're an incredible team. And there are existing placements that you can look off of a list. If there's something that you're thinking individually, could I do this as a summer in practice program? Uh, we offer the same opportunities. Now, Ray's may be a 12 credit um, during the semester program. Our credits will fit the summer time period. Uh, and Susie is the contact person for all of that. There's a range of credits that you can decide, you the student, 
um, working with your, your job. How many hours am I offered? How many am I going to work? And Susie will work very closely with you to tell you what the hours are for you to get the so many credits. No, there's a range. And then there's a one credit classroom component, just like Professor Brescia described for the fall or the spring um, in, in practice programs that he teaches. Uh, and that one credit class for the summer, it's remote, it's online, and uh, it meets once a week. And often we do what are called, I call them medical rounds. It's where the students from all over the country, because people can be placed all over the country. We've had LA, Miami, Boston, tons of Albany people. And they all speak to each other about their, what they're doing, their frustrations with the pandemic, I mean, with the COVID and all of that, we've had to work together to get people, get their computers for their job, because often you can't use your personal computers. Um, how do I get online? How do I find my supervisor when I've never met these individuals personally? We work with you. And so um, we're very flexible. And just like Professor Brescia talked about, it continues in the summer. So if the summer is a better time for you, Think of the same opportunities you're hearing Professor Brescia talk about, Professor Connors talk about during the regular fall and spring semesters. I'm your summer contact. And so, you know, there's, you can go out for the summer and do an internship, do a placement and have nothing to do with Albany Law School. And that's totally fine. And most students do, just so, you're, just so we're all clear. Many students go out and have, you know, internships, they work at firms, they work for judges, and, you know, you don't have any contact with the law school for a couple of months, and that's totally fine. That's what most students do. If you want, however, to get academic credit for the summer, then you would get your internship and do it through the summer and practice program where you get the academic credit, you take part in the classroom. Uh, and so what the benefit of doing that is you get to, to, to bring some credits together. It means later semesters, you can take a, you know, a, a, maybe a few credits less uh, so that you can have more time to do other internships or paid internships. Um, it, you, some students use it as a way to advance their degree and, graduate a semester early. You've got to do other things as well, but that is certainly something that some students use the summer in practice program to accomplish for them. There is a catch, and that is you do pay for those credits, even if you have a, a, a generous scholarship or even a modest scholarship, you still pay for the credits. It's, 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 you can get, um, you can get uh, uh, financial aid, if you take, and, and I'm going to turn to Dean Fitzsimmons for the nod, as long as you take at least five credits over the summer, you can apply for financial aid. Uh, that's not any of our department, but uh, just know that. So with summer in practice, you can, you can peg the number of credits you get to the number of hours you work. So if you're working the 33 hours, um, I, I, we have to do the math a little bit uh, here uh, in, in public. You can either get the full six credits or you can get a, a four credits. And I think it's 24 hours a week and 36 hours a week. I'm not exactly sure of those hours. Uh, Professor Mann, do you know those off the top of your head? Well, Susie's not here. Susie's yeah, my, she's, my she's the holder person. of the key of the credits. Uh, maybe Dean Fitzsimmons knows as well. But there's basically the number of hours you work uh, will determine how many credits you get. And so, if you're only getting four credits for summer in practice, then you, if you wanted to get financial aid, you'd have to take another class to get. And and there are lots of online classes over the summer. That's something I want to point out uh, for a semester in practice. The class is abs. The classroom component we meet once a week it is all remote so and that's how we facilitate you being anywhere in the world so that one classroom component for semester in practice uh for spring or fall all remote the other program we haven't talked about is the city semester program so think of city semester program as a long distance field placement in the sense that you can do a out of the region internship for less than 
a full semester's worth of academic credit, but you complement it with other classes, so online classes. So you might do, as we've had students do, an internship and they work 24 hours a week in a, a New York City placement, and then they're taking a class or two uh, online. Now we have many more classes online. It's not simply, you know, we will not approve. We have not approved someone who wants to do city semester. They want to do an internship in New York City for the for the fall, and they just want to uh, be allowed to go online for evidence or con law two. Doesn't work that way. If there's an online class then it's okay. We, we have not just approved people to, to take the online option because it's not really an online option for all classes, right? Um, so we can talk about, about, you know, there are lots of classes that are online. We've, they're only online. We've moved some of the sort of more core classes online. So if you wanted to do city semester where you worked in DC or New York, but you don't wanna work full time, totally understandable, there's this other option, you would just complement that internship with an online class or two yeah. to get you to the number of credits you need for the semester. Uh, and there are more classes that are fully online than ever before, uh, but it isn't simply a case of, oh, I'm going to take you know, a class that's that's not online and just zoom in because we've got this option now. That's not how this works. Um, so uh, Dean Fitzsimmons, do you wanna add anything uh, if I've missed anything or some common questions that you get from students? Uh, I yield the floor to you. Sure, absolutely. Um, I did wanna point out, I know Andrea Wedler, our financial aid director is not here, but if you are, you do have a scholarship and you're planning to use summer to accelerate to graduate early, then you wanna to talk to her because she will rearrange your scholarship to cover summer expenses. So that is the only way that would work to use your scholarship and she can help you with that. Um, Oh, I had another. Oh, that was my other question. My other point was just to, to remember for um, distance learning credits, your max cap is 15 that count towards your JD degree. So like we can only count 15 of those credits as online towards your 87. So I just want to we do on your degree audit, we do show a running tally. So, you know, um, so you just want to be careful when you're making your schedule that you don't go over that max cap. But for semester in practice, city semester and summer in practice, you only have one credit that counts against that, those 15 credits um, because Correct. it's just, just the classroom component. Now, to do, to do the math for city semester and summer in and semester in practice, uh, it's a simple formula. Every three hours you work a week for the 14 weeks of the semester, you get one credit for the practicum component for your field you know for your uh, internship and you add one credit for the classroom component so students who take the traditional semester in practice generally take it for 12 credits so it's 33 hours a week for 14 weeks that comes to 462 hours once you reach that 462 hours mark, you have completed your internship obligations. Some students finish a little early, some students finish you know, a week late, that's okay. We shoot for those 33 hours. Uh, that student I talked about who, who worked in Tennessee, he just happened to be doing a, an international uh, moot court, which he ended up winning. He, was, he and his partner were literally world champions that we had a few years ago. And he was doing the final round in late January. And, and that's when his internship was. He asked to start a little late. It was okay, it was fine. We had him working towards his 462 hours. He finished early because he was at the Federal Defenders and he was working 60 hour weeks. So he not only started late, but he finished early. So we don't encourage people to work 60 hour weeks, but he loved it. 
uh, and so if you finish, it's more common that students finish a little early. Sometimes you need a couple more days. It's not a big deal. Um, so I want to yield the floor. Know that there, there's an a, a extensive, there's extensive information about about these programs, particularly about summer practice city semester. There's also information on field placements on summer and practice on the website. We have really good FAQs for summer and practice and city semester. So hopefully some of the, your questions could be answered there. But if you have, we have uh, about 15 minutes. I know I have to go teach. I see some of my, uh, my legal profession students, I have to teach at one. Um, but we've got a few minutes. Um, maybe you can, well, I, I'm the host. Maybe I'll, I'll shift the host to somebody else if, if we go beyond 1245. Um, but but I, uh, unless uh, professors Mann or Connors or Ms. Casey or Dean Fitzsimmons want to add anything, we'll, we'll turn to your questions. No, good to go. Okay. So uh, you could raise your hand. You could just uh, jump in, whatever you want. We'll do our best to answer your questions. And the, you know, the bottom line is, if you want to explore doing something like this, turn to one of us. We'll help you figure out. We're going to try and do like a chart that lays a lot of this out so you can see it all in one place. But if, if, you, if you said you want to do something like this, you're just not sure how to get started, how to do it, which is the right program for you, talk to any of us and we'll help uh, to figure out what's right for you. But go ahead, your questions. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Yeah. There you go. Hi, sorry. I'm having techn technology issues already today. Um, can you talk about what the best time is to start um, communicating with you about uh, semester and practice if we're interested in spring of 2023, um, especially if we're looking at areas that may be a little bit more difficult to obtain um, a position? So I, it's, never, it's never too early. Uh, it's sometimes too late. Uh, but it's never too early to, to talk about semester and practice, to talk about any of these programs. Um, it depends on what you want to do. Usually, you know, if you're looking at a uh, spring of 2023, I would start thinking about sort of a, a traditional position or not a traditional position, uh, a, a, a generic position around September, October. But if, it, if there's a particular program you want to apply to, so we've had students work at the White House through the White House Fellows Program. We've had students work at the SEC and the Department of Justice uh, in, their, in their programs. Something like that, if you're looking to use a sort of pre-organized program, apply into that and use it through, you know, to, to uh, apply it to some, uh, some summer in practice or semester in practice, you have to hear by, uh, adhere to their schedules, right? But we've had students do that. Like I said, White House fellows, SEC, Justice Department. Um, so with that, I would work with your counselor at the Career Center to think through what are the types of things you want to do and then um, look at those deadlines, watch, watch for those deadlines. Um, but you know, generally speaking, unless you're, unless you're thinking about that type of program, you know, usually sort of late September, early October uh, is a good time to think about a spring placement. For a fall placement, probably after the wave of summer applications are in, I would say, uh, and Ms. Casey, please correct me if I'm wrong, you know, early April, uh, you know, to start thinking about, or even later to start thinking about a fall placement. Um, you know, it could be June, it could be July for a fall placement, um, unless there's a deadline, right? White House fellows, Justice Department, things like that. Uh, Joanne, did you want to add anything? I would just uh, agree with you, Professor Brescia. I think sooner rather than later. So if you're thinking about for next fall and you want to meet with your career counselor now, just to kind of get the wheels in motion, start thinking about it, doing some research for both the career counselor and the student, 
just to see, you know, um, what the employer's deadline might be. And you might, you could, you know, we have a lot of contacts, you know, uh, uh, reach out to us. If you said, you know, I really wanted to do this, you know, depend, we'll, we'll strategize about what's the best way to approach them. And we can say, you know, you, this, if someone said to me, I really wanted to work in this place in the fall, I'd say, okay, we know somebody there. Let's reach out to them and just say, I know you're probably inundated with applications for the summer. I'm actually reaching out to you on behalf of a student for the fall. Probably too early for you to think about that now. You've probably got other things on your mind. When would be a good time to reach back out, right? Joanne, you would agree that's what we would do. And then they, they probably would say, oh, check back in with us in, in uh, mid-July, you know? Uh, and then we would, and then we'd say, remember when we reached out to you before, we have this great student, she's still interested. You know, let's, let's try and, and connect uh, the two of you. Uh, so, the, so every place is a little different, you know, depending on our, our connections there. Generally, if it's a place where we have a connection, we would make that kind of outreach. If it was for the spring, we probably wouldn't reach out to people until, you know, unless there was a deadline late July and just say, hey, this is probably way too early, but the student is really eager. They can work for you in the spring. When would you consider something like this? And they might say, hey, you know, we're not doing anything. Let's look at, let's look at the application. Let's, let's bring the, the student in and let's line this up now. Or let's say, oh, you know, we can't even look at this until, you know, November 1 or something like that. And then, and then we'll reach out to them on November 1. But this is a, you know, we've got a full court press. We've got a whole team of experts here who are eager to help you uh, land a great placement and find the program that's right for you. And I do think the first step on all of this is to talk to your career counselor. Uh, if you don't know this, uh, you know that each of you have your own career counselor at, at the Career Center. Uh, reach out to them and say, you, you, know, you, you attended this program, you're interested in exploring some of these options. How do I get started? Okay, now the, the thing to think if you are going to do some of these programs, right? Like summer in practice, we've already said, it's great. It gives you, you know, four to six credits. You can get a jump start on some of, uh, on building up the credits for graduation. With semester in practice, you, uh, in a way, right? You lose a semester of taking classes on campus. So what that means is you have one less semester in which you can take some of your required classes. So Elizabeth, so you said, you know, fall of 2023, that would, that's your graduation year. But if you were a second year and you were saying, I want to take it in the spring of my second year, what should I be doing now? Well, when you start picking classes for the fall, I want to see you try and get some of your upper level required classes out of the way. Because you're you're off the you know you're off the clock if you would right if you're doing a remote uh, or you're doing an internship that's not in the capital region so that you can't take on campus classes you know that means you have one less semester in which you can satisfy some of those upper level requirements so I would just try and take two or three you know you're going to take con law two. I would take evidence and uh, another class like administrative law, great building block class, take, take at least three of your upper level required classes in the fall of your second year. If you want to do semester in practice at any point. Uh, Crystal. Hi, thank you all for hosting this and for um, answering all our questions. A question that I have is um, how is the class component part, I guess, graded in terms of like our weighted GPA or how does it look, I guess, on a transcript, I guess, in terms of also trying to figure out, um, I mean, I, because we didn't have to choose our schedule yet, I don't know how classes are being scheduled and how we register for classes in case there's some classes that are, you know, only really for the fall, more so than the spring, or some professors are only available and you might really want to take one professor of another professor. Um, and I, I briefly saw an email just about um, like the grading for upperclassmen um, classes. And I guess my, um, I guess it's just how are we able to, um, 
uh, know like how, if there's like a big paper for that class component or if it's kind of like go as it is or it depends on the lawyer. Like I kind of want to know a little bit about that structure if it's possible. Yeah, so with semester and practice and city semester, the uh, the class, and this is true of field placement and summer and practice in terms of the grading, the classroom component gets a letter grade. It's only one credit though. So it gets weighted in your GPA as a one credit class. The practicum component for all of these programs is non-letter grade. So it's credit fail. Uh, for semester and practice in city semester, you do weekly reflections and there's a, uh, a, a five page paper at the end. It's not a big 25 page paper or anything like that. Um, you have to submit timesheets. You do this, this, this weekly reflection, which is relatively brief uh, and, and you have to participate in class. And there are, for semester practice, the city semester, we run the class together and you have uh, readings for every, every class, reading cases, reading the rules, uh, and, and uh, rules of ethics, and we talk about them in the context of your internship, uh, do a little bit of grand rounds like Professor Mann talked about. Um, so it's, it's very engaging. It's very, um, it's not a lecture at all. Uh, it's a conversation about your internships, but that's the, that's the, the grade, um, uh, the grade breakdown. In terms of, you know, what classes are offered and when, by whom, the registrar's office will put all that information out when it comes time to register for classes in probably late April, right, uh, Dean Fitzsimmons? So for, for the fall, you'll register for fall classes, we register at the uh, sort of late-ish April, and you'll get a sense if you, you know, want to think about uh, one of these programs for later on, then you'll see what's available in the fall and, and take the classes that you want to take. Uh, Bella. Yes, thank you all for um, giving us your advice and time. I wanted to ask two questions about the fall field placements. First, is there any additional cost like summer? And second, if I do all my required classes, I, will I still graduate on time? Um, the cost of the field placement, I mean, it's, it's like you, any other class, you pay for the um, number of credits you're taking. So you, yes, there is a cost towards um, the field placement in the, in the semester as, as there is for any other courses that you would take during the, the placement. The but it's part, of the, it's part of your tuition for the fall. It's part of the spring. tuition, yeah. yeah. And it's generally, students usually take the fall and, and spring field placement for five credits for it towards the field work and one the, the class component. We do allow flexibility. If you want uh, fewer credits, you know, um, you can go down to three with, with my approval for, for um, field work or up to five for field work. And again, that depends on, you know, as Professor Brezier said, it's good to talk to your career counselor to see where you're at specifically. It's hard to give general advice on these things because each of you has you know, different kinds of uh, classes that you've taken, uh, you know, and um, you know, we take two L's and three L's of course. So again, all of you come with different um, uh, sets of courses taken and different sets of courses you need to take. So I would echo his advice and say, speak with your career uh, advisor. Experiential learning is re re required. So um, summer is a great time to do it. It's fall and, and spring are a great time to do it, of course. Um, and it really depends on you know, what it looks like for you. And if you wanna reach out to us and talk to us more about this, um, you know, I would echo what's been said already and please feel free to reach out to us. We're available to meet with you. Am I answering all your questions or Bella? Yes. Or? Okay. Yeah, that answered everything. Thank you so much. Uh, before Jenabu, uh, Dean Fitzsimmons, do you have a uh, comment? I assume you, you raised your hand. I did, yeah, you I to did. Jump in on that. Yeah. I just wanted to remind everyone, you can take up to 30 clinic credits to count towards your 87. And um, 
Lori Law, my associate registrar and myself are happy to meet and map out with any student your academic career. We have, we're, we're up to about 30 JDs who graduate in December. So they're graduating early and it's literally just a little careful planning and we can help you make that happen. Um, or there's also joint degrees. People wanna get an MBA from UAlbany. So we're happy to, to work with you and, and map that out for you. Uh, and forgive me if I'm mispronouncing your, your name, Jenabu, go ahead. No, you said it perfectly, Professor Brescia. Thank you. Um, I just have a question about um, the type of internship that we can um, do during the summer in practice. Um, if it's paid, can we still get credit for it? And um, how can we get funding if it's not enough credits to take as if you're taking summer classes, but um, you still would need um, funding for housing if it's abroad, if it's abroad or like um, somewhere else where you would need to be covered. How does that work? Um, so Ray, I'm going to let you chime in too if you want, okay? Because that overlaps a little bit. Uh, in terms of Jenabu, you're asking about the first question was what? Um, if the internship is paid or if the placement is paid, oh, can you okay. still get credit for it um, as a okay. summer practice course? So in terms of paid positions, Professor Brescia pointed out that we've done very limited uh, positions approval where, they, where the individual has been paid plus got credit, but that doesn't mean it's not a possibility. But as Professor Brescia spoke to, uh, this is ABA oversight that it requires basically that, and it's also policy at the school, that the private paid position is one that you can't regularly or normally get in a governmental or not-for-profit or other position that we have, for instance, on our field placement list, for instance. But it is possible. So depending on what you might be thinking about, Jenna Boo, um, it's, it's a discussion to start having with any of us. Um, in terms of what you're thinking about. So you can, there is a possibility you could get both credit and paid, but it is not a regular, here it is a part of the program, everybody can, can just opt for it. So it does require approval um, at different levels. That's right. I would just, I would just add that, you know, if, if, you know, make your case, we generally do not approve that but if there's some you know, real good reason why you need to do that, we had a student, for example, who really wanted to do labor law and you know, the, the, understandably the firm that she wanted to work at was saying like, you know, we're a labor law firm, we can't have an unpaid intern, right? They, they, they just philosophically, they, they wouldn't do that. And so we made an exception for that student. Um, if you're doing, a public interest placement and there's a stipend associated with it, we'll kind of treat that differently as well. Um, so generally speaking, if you're getting paid, we won't allow you to get academic credit as well. But if you, know, if you can make a case, uh, we will we'll certainly hear any, any request for uh, consideration for an exemption, you know, exception to policy, put it that way. Thank you guys so much. That Thank helps you. a lot. But don't, you know, bring bring your examples to us. If if you've got something that you that you that you that you can make the case, you're we were training you to be good advocates, make the case. Um, I'm gonna to have to jump off. Uh, uh, does, does, should I switch the host to somebody else or uh, is if there, yeah, yeah, you wanna do that? Sure. All right, I'll make- Just make Professor, me a co-host. Yeah. yeah, I'll make you the host host. Okay. Uh, host. All right, thanks everybody. Thank you, Professor Thank you. Bridger. Thank you. Make host. Can you yes. find it? You bet. All right, bye. Jenabu, I also want to say your follow-up question, the, if Jenabu is still there, maybe not. I think, I think she left. Okay, that's okay. Anybody else? Are we good to go then? Looks like everyone's kind of just disappearing. I think Bella has a question, Deb. Oh, okay, couldn't see that. Bella. 
I had a quick question. I just oh, wanted Isabella. to know. Yeah, <laughs> hi, Professor Man. Hey. Um, I was just wondering, what would you recommend just in general? Would I get more benefit long term for my legal career doing a fall field placement or taking my classes? Uh, well, I think it really depends on the individual, to be honest. OK, I mean, what all these these programs offer you is everybody during law school pretty much wants to work at some point in their outside outside of your regular classes in a legal position. So for some people, the, the field placement aspect of the program is what they want to take advantage of. For other people, you may want to work in a new area or an area that's not normally available through field placement. And it does require you to go to Washington or it does require you to go to Boston. So it, it is very much individualistic. So, uh, it, and, and I can't say it's negative. I think it's only can be positive and we wouldn't put you into a negative. Uh, your career planning people, your, you know, Jaya, myself, Professor Brescia, Joanne Casey, Joanne Fitzsimmons, we're all here to try to make a positive uh, use of these placement programs, the various forms that they are. They might seem confusing at first, but they're really not. It's just a different flexible approach at the school and we have different names for different semesters and whatever the programs are, but it is very much individual, Isabella. It depends, you know, it depends. And, but I, it, think of it as positive. Can I just add to that? Okay. Um, Bella, these, these um, field placements, semesters in practice, all of them, they really are all positive and they can be real career changers for students. And we definitely, from our perspective, encourage you to do as many as possible. So I think what Professor Manns is saying also is that if it's something that you can do in the fall as a field placement, great. But if you're thinking of going someplace where, let's say, Boston or Washington or someplace where you want to do the semester in practice, then it would be important in the fall to get those required classes taken care of. So it's really just about planning and where you want to kind of end up after graduation and how we can kind of get those experiences to make you as marketable as possible. So two of my students. Thank you both. Oh, yeah, two of my students went to Boston and they're there this semester and, and Professor Brescia gave me way too much credit because we worked as a, as a great team together. But, you know, they were lucky that all of their, um, when they thought about this, they didn't think about it as early as I would have liked, but they were so lucky that they had taken care of all the required credits to make this a viable option for them. Yeah. And I, and I can give you an example. I had a student who knew she wanted to practice in New Jersey and she wanted to get a, a, a placement in New Jersey. So we don't have a list of New Jersey opportunities and she wanted to work in the private sector, but we did facilitate her opportunities and she, because her intention was to work in a certain place upon graduation. So, I mean, that that's the kind of possible, you know, possibilities that, and students can come come to us with their own ideas that we haven't even thought about. Thank you so much both for your advice. I will definitely take that into consideration and uh, coordinate with the career counseling department and with you as well, of course, Professor Mann. You got it. Okay. All right. Am I seeing you later today, Isabella? <laughs> I hope so. If you're available anytime okay. after four. <laughs> All right. I'll see you. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You got it. All right, everybody, are we Bye, done? ladies. Deb, so good to see you again. It's I uh, stopped meeting like this. Same here, Jay and Joanne and Joanne. And Joanne and Joanne, yeah. <laughs> you too. You too. Bye, everyone. Have Bye. a great day. Take care. This was great. Thank you. Thank you, JS. Take care. You too.